Welcome back. About a month ago, I got contacted by Juan Pablo, one of the co-owners of Pontus Watches. And I hadn't heard of them before, but when I looked them up, they seemed to specialize in brass and bronze divers. And Juan Pablo wanted to know if I was interested in checking out their first pilot's watch, the Condor, which is part of one of their other brands, Fondaria Navale. He then followed that up by listing off the specs, and there were three things that immediately stood out. The first is that the case is made of bronze, which was really always a bonus. But the other two things was that it was 44 millimeters wide, and it had a 24 millimeter strap. So at this point, I'm just thinking that it's a really big flieger. So I'm a little interested, but I'm also thinking about how much other things I have to do this summer. So I'm thinking I really should pass on this, and that's really what I was planning on telling him until I saw this picture. And my eyes were immediately drawn to the green dial version. So while it is a pilot's watch, it's definitely not a flieger, especially with those cathedral hands. And I'm really always a sucker for the cathedral hands. And in some ways it was reminding me more of a field watch than a pilot's watch, especially with the green and gold color scheme going on here that reminded me of the Seiko Alpinist. And that was pretty much it for me. No matter how big this watch was, I really wanted to take a closer look. Now in retrospect, I have indeed found that it is a pilot's watch, and it has definitely taken some inspiration from the Zenith Pilot, if not an homage to it. Now Pontus itself is an interesting company. Looking into them a little bit more, they're actually based out of Lima, Peru, but they do some of their design work in Tucson, Arizona, which is why their watches come in these handmade wooden boxes made from Peruvian wood. And one thing that I did like is that the name of the watch, Condor, seems to be fitting for their first pilot's watch, as that is the bird that rules the skies above the Andes Mountains. Now there's one more thing to talk about before we really jump in here, and that's that the Condor is a limited edition watch, with only 50 of each color version produced, so that's a total of 150 watches. And I think that does reflect in the price here, as well as the case, crown, and buckle, which is bronze, and all of that is also a factor in the price. Where the case and crown are made up of this brushed copper tin 8 bronze. And the case here is reported at being 44 millimeters wide, but when I actually went to measure it, I found it much closer to 45 without the crown, and almost 51 with. Which means that this is even larger than I was anticipating. So if you're really wanting to see smaller watches, sorry, not this week. But I promise that the next two to three videos, the watches will all be under 42 millimeters, if not 40. Now lug to lug here is just under 51, so it is a little long, but it's not bad considering the width. And when it comes to total thickness, the Condor comes in at 14.5 millimeters, and that's with a nicely domed crystal as well as a very decorated case back. Lug width is 24 millimeters, so there are definitely less options than if this was a 22. Especially for leather straps, it just feels like you're being tied up, and not in a good way. Now luckily, the strap here does start out at 24, but it does taper down to 22. Water resistance here is 200 meters, which is kind of interesting for a pilot's watch. In some ways, it almost feels like it's built more like a diver, at least proportionally. And it also weighs like one as well, as it comes in just at 136 grams, and that's with this leather strap. And just from holding it, you can tell that most of the weight is in the watch itself. Retail price appears to be $499, but there is a pre-order price of $450. And that pre-order price is good until August 2nd. Now, we did talk about the limited edition status, as well as the bronze elements here. But even with all that, I do think it's a little high. The case shape itself is rather simple, and just reminiscent of a classic pilot's watch. Yet the finishing on the case here is really well done, from the clean bezel to the lugs and even on the rear of the case, where you can clearly see the nicely embossed case back. And while exhibition case backs are nice, I'm really starting to appreciate these embossed case backs that are custom for each model. They just seem to give each watch its own character. I've had the Condor for a few weeks, and you can already tell there's some nice patina developing on it, which is really the main reason people love bronze watches. It just ages and changes over time, helping each watch just to be a little more unique. Although I've said it before, and I'll say it again, that patina is really just rust you're paying for. Yet it really doesn't distract from it or make it less attractive. While the finishing of the case itself is good, I do have one complaint about the case design. It's that it just might be a little too classic looking, too safe if you will. 
and in some ways it does remind me of a larger version of that San Martin Flieger I looked at a while ago. Which is not necessarily a bad thing, as that's really what they're going for. It's just at this price, I would like to see some more fine touches on the case, just something that makes it more unique or special. Where here, there really isn't anything other than the patina and the crown that draws your eye to it. Although the crown does look great, it's made from the same bronze, and it's this large but very nicely finished onion-shaped crown. While it may be a little overkill in practicality while wearing it, it does make it extremely easy to screw in and out. Not to mention, it just looks great on that case. There is, however, one giant problem with that crown, but I'll save that until the end. Now, there's not much to say about the crystal. It's a single domed sapphire with anti-reflective coating. It just looks great and is very nice and clear. And as for the dial, which is really the main reason I was drawn to and wanted to see this watch in person. This one is a matte emerald green, which I just personally love with the gold colored highlights of the indices and hands. It just kind of takes the color scheme of the Seiko Alpinist and just takes it up a notch. The indices are nicely applied with a gold outline and white loom. And I especially like the font of them, but that part is really homaged. Beyond the indices, you have very small minute indicators in orange, followed by a train track chapter ring in white. And on that train track chapter ring, you do have a very tiny Flieger-like arrow at the 12. And I would really like the splash of color with that orange here, as well as I always love a train track chapter ring. It just always goes well with cathedral hands. But here, we also have an issue. And it's not so much with the dial design, but the build itself. The Flieger arrow at the 12 makes it obvious that the dial is not lined up right with the case. It seems to be rotated just to the left, maybe about a minute. Now this doesn't affect the watch's operation, but it's always a big pet peeve of mine. But let's go back to the hands, which are also homaged. They're very nicely done, and in fact I think every aspect of the dial here is nicely executed. Everything is just sharp and crisp, which I think the macro shots here will really show off. And overall, I really like the dial layout here, as well as the watch in general. It's an interesting combination. It's sort of a pilot's watch case with maybe a little bit more of a field watch dial and built as tough as a diver. Although personally, I would like the watch if it was just a little smaller and a little thinner, maybe closer to 42 than 45. As for the loom, well, the loom is okay. The dial as well as the hand seem to have an equal amount of C3 loom, so they both have a nice even glow at first. Yet for a comparison, I threw it up against some good pilot and field watches. And after 40 minutes, it is clearly the dimmest. And that's even with more surface area on the hands than the others. So I think the loom here is okay, but it definitely could be improved. Movement-wise, we have a Seiko NH35A. And generally, it's just a great workhorse movement, and it's really hard to go wrong with it. Yet here, it is something we do need to talk about. Now, there isn't necessarily anything wrong with having a Seiko NH35A at this price. I mean, Seiko sells plenty. But when you start to get over $350, there's just a lot more competition that have better movements. So here, I think it starts to become more of a compromise, or something that you're just settling for, rather than something that's a great fit for the price. Although, that's just my opinion. And to be completely fair, Laco does sell their basic Flieger with a Miyota 8200 for not a lot less. The strap the Condor comes with is pretty good. It's this nice brown leather with white stitching. And for a really nice touch, they do include a brass buckle. And I think it has this really cool, unique shape. If not, maybe a little overkill in terms of size. I think if you're looking for a watch with an understated presence, something to really fly under the radar like Doug Masters, then this really isn't it. If the watch's bronze case wasn't eye-catching enough, then the green and gold color scheme of the dial definitely would be. While the watch is wide, I don't think it ever felt that way when wearing it, and was surprisingly comfortable on the wrist, especially for the size. The only major thing I noticed was that it always seemed to feel a little too tall, just made me self-conscious about hitting it into things. Now, I could talk more about this, but I really want to keep this part short because there is a bigger issue that needs to be addressed. So when it comes down to the size and how the Condor wears, just really go with your gut on this. Now the bigger issue to address here is the crown and stem. And while I really do like the crown and its oversized look, there is an issue with it. The problem is that this particular watch seems to have a defect. 
Now the crown will unscrew and pull out to set the time just fine, but when you try to push that crown back in, it often doesn't want to go in and there's a little bit of resistance and just kind of pushes itself back out. And in order to get it in, you almost have to make sure that the crown is perfectly lined up before pushing it in and then it just goes in nice and easy. So there's obviously an issue here and definitely a long-term issue that something might break as you accidentally try to force it in at one point. And running into an issue with a watch is never a good thing when it's your first experience with that brand. But I contacted Pontus and told them about the issue and the response was that it's strange, they hadn't heard of it before, but they were going to look into it. Now, rather than just wait for them, I decided to take it a little bit further. And I just happened to notice on Instagram, another reviewer had one of their watches to review, and that's Oleg over at 24 hours at a time. So I reached out to Oleg and told him about the issue I was having, and he confirmed back that he was having a similar issue. So again, that's not a good sign. Now, I don't know if he's put out his review yet, but if he hasn't, keep an eye out for it for just his opinion on all this. But to Pontus's credit, they actually got back to me within 24 hours, and they let me know that they searched their inventory and found 17 additional watches with this issue, and it was most likely something with the stem or the crown being too short. And the watches with an issue would be heading off to be repaired. So it's actually lucky that these were caught while this was still in pre-sale, so hopefully anyone who buys one won't have an issue. And anyone who buys one should get a nice looking watch with a great dial. But there's a glaring quality control issue here that is really hard to ignore. With only 150 condors created, that's well over 10% with a defect. Now those defective watches are being fixed, but it's obvious that something internally needs to be changed moving forward. Although I think they do deserve a lot of credit for acknowledging there was an issue and for immediately moving to fix it. So here's my basic takeaway from this. The Condor has a nice strap, a good case, and a beautiful well-done dial. It's a company and a brand with some potential. They just have some issues to work through first. But let me know what you think about the Condor other than this QC issue down below in a comment, or if there are some other micro brands I should definitely take a look at. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for joining me.